This video is made possible by Wix. Wix is a free platform that allows you to build a highly customizable, professional, and robust website with ease. With simple drag and drop tools, you'll create a beautiful website in no time at all. More about Wix later in this video, but if you want to get started right now, and why wouldn't you, go to wix.com forward slash go forward slash brain food, or just click the link below. <laughs> So in the video today, we're answering a viewer question because Wayne T asks us, what's the deal with movies showing sea captains performing marriages? They can't actually do this, right? According to countless movies and TV shows, sea captains, in addition to getting to wear dapper uniforms and snazzy hats, have the ability to marry couples aboard their ships thanks to power bestowed upon them by the sea, we guess? So can these captains actually perform marriages that are then legally binding? As with most things in life, particularly when the law is involved, it's complicated. However, as a general rule, with a few exceptions like Japan, Bermuda, and Romania, sea captains do not have any inherent authority to officiate weddings where the couple will then be considered legally married. Japanese sea captains are given such an authority as long as they're marrying two Japanese people, and a similar thing is true in Romania, where, interestingly, Romanian law also gives aircraft captains the same power. Bermuda allows ship captains the same privilege so long as the ship they're captaining is registered in Bermuda. This was a not-too-subtle way to encourage more cruise ships to register their boats in Bermuda, and it totally worked. Despite this sort of authority not being a thing, in most regions, it is entirely possible and not even terribly uncommon for sea captains to marry couples. For example, one Captain Arnold Wonsever, working for Skyline Cruises in New York, noted that he performs on average close to 200 weddings every year. So, how do all those sea captains who currently do it get around the whole legal problem? And where did the ubiquitous idea that such individuals had that authority come from in the first place? To begin with, because there is such a common notion worldwide that sea captains are able to officiate legally binding marriages, some sea captains choose to go the extra mile to get certified, so they're able to do it. This is simply a great way to make a little extra money on the side while otherwise performing their day job of captaining the ship. It's also, in some case is a great way to get more people to come on board your ship in the form of wedding parties. Getting such a certification isn't difficult in many regions, such as the United States, where becoming ordained is absurdly easy, with various organizations offering the service online and, in a few cases, even doing it for free. Moving beyond the certified, some sea captains will simply officiate a wedding ceremony, but with it understood that said individual does not have the ability to sign off on things to make the marriage legally binding. However, there is even a caveat here in that, depending on where you're from, it may be the case that declaring in front of witnesses that you're marrying someone and then you go to live with that person, that you might actually qualify for a common law marriage. And, contrary to popular belief, it's not even required that you live with the person for several years before said common law marriage kicks in. In some places, it's instant. In this case, it wouldn't matter if you had the guy who swabs the decks or even a literal bilge rat perform the ceremony. It could still be legally binding if you wanted it to be. And as a pro tip here, that bilge rat is probably going to charge you way less than the captain. For all other cases where the captain has no legal authority, the individuals getting married will typically just go to get the marriage officially done in front of a judge or a minister somewhere else, either before or after the wedding at sea. In fact, aboard some cruise ships where the sea captain isn't certified to officially marry a couple, but said company offers some sort of wedding service package, the company will simply have an individual on board who does have the required certification. This way, the couple gets the sea captain wedding ceremony that they wanted and the legally binding side of things done all in one place. So this all brings us around to the question of how this widely accepted trope came about. Well, no one really knows for sure. The general thought here is that because traveling across the ocean was once a rather time-consuming process and potentially done with many people packed on board ready to start new lives, there was sometimes a desire for marriages while on the trip. Now, with the occasional need established, it's also noteworthy that sea captains once had near absolute authority over the vessels they commanded. For example, captains from many regions historically had the authority to do things like arrest and jail those on board their ships, as well as create birth and death certificates. They also had the ability to function more or less as notaries for official documents like wills, and even in some cases were required to note in their logs when weddings occurred on board their ship. 
Thus, it's hypothesized that these types of extra powers, particularly officially logging marriages that happen on the ship and then later reporting them to the authorities, all perhaps gave the general public the idea that captains could legally marry couples. And for whatever reason, sea captains seem to have been happy to oblige such requests. In an apparent attempt to get their captains to stop doing this, at least in the US Navy, in the early 20th century, they included a section tucked away in the Code of Regulations dealing with this very phenomena. It reads, The commanding officer shall not perform a marriage ceremony on board his ship or aircraft. He shall not permit a marriage ceremony to be performed on board when the ship or aircraft is outside the territory of the United States. According to these regulations, the only time such marriages are allowed is if a registered official who can perform a legally binding marriage is aboard the ship or plane and all relevant permits and permissions in accordance with local laws of the couple being married have been obtained. Outside of that, however, the first sentence forbids captains from performing the ceremony, and the second sentence forbids them from allowing others to do it while at sea, presumably owing to the legal complication that arises from marrying people when in international waters. But to sum this all up, no. As a general rule, outside of the caveats previously mentioned, sea captains do not have the authority to legally marry a couple. This, however, has not stopped them from performing such ceremonies, nor Hollywood from promoting the idea that they do have this power. This has all resulted in an almost worldwide notion today that sea captains are able to do this, in turn resulting in some captains getting additional certifications to be able to marry couples looking for a sea-based wedding performed by someone in a cool hat and a snazzy uniform. Indeed, the culmination of all of this has even resulted in places like Japan and Romania granting their captains this ability. And in recent years, there's even been a push by shipping unions in the UK to likewise grant sea captains this ability without having to jump through an extra hoop of getting outside certification. So you probably started this video hoping that you could become a sea captain who would be marrying people at exotic locales all over the world, and you'd do this by promoting yourself with a beautiful website made by Wix. But alas, you can get a beautiful website from Wix, but you're probably going to have to come up with a new business idea. Now, we at Today I Found Out set up our brand new podcast website with Wix, which you can find at brainfood.fm. I made this website entirely myself and all on Wix, and I have no technical abilities. Wix allows you to make a highly customized, professional, and robust website with ease. Wix approached us a while back if we'd like to make a website with them, and we were like, well, we got this new podcast thing. Let's give it a go. That's a pretty good fit. Wix had recently got into supporting podcasts, so that all worked pretty great. It was very easy to get set up. Wix has professional solutions for every need, whether you want to host a video, a picture gallery, or arrange bookings. You can do it all with Wix. With Wix, there's no heavy lifting. It's all drag and drop. I even used a template for our website to make it even easier, but you can start from scratch if you want. Wix has hundreds of templates, unlimited pages, and top-grade hosting for free. You can upgrade to one of their premium plans for as little as $5 a month to get even more, and you can do all of that by going to Wix.com forward slash go forward slash brain food or just clicking the link in the description below and as always thank you for watching